So Mr. Bell told you that Cato took 300 keys? Yes. What's a key? A kilo of cocaine. So 300 kilograms? Yes. And Mr. Nunnery, this is in 2003, correct? Yes. At this point, you'd been dealing drugs since you were a young man? Yes. Based on your expertise, how much would 300 kilograms of cocaine be worth in 2003? Around 4.5 million. And you said Mr. Bell was offering money to carry out this contract? Yes. And how much did he offer? He said that they were offering him 200000 and if I find somebody that we would split the money, he would give me 100000 and he would keep 100000 So how did you leave it with Mr. Bell? I told him I, I try to find somebody. I got somebody in mind. And what did you do next? I think I called the bar and told him I wanted to talk to him about something. How long after the conversation with Mr. Bell did you call Mr. Span? As soon as I left. And you said you called Mr. Span and said you wanted to talk to him about something? Yes. Did you talk about this on the telephone? No. Why not? Because I, I don't normally talk about criminal activity on the telephone. Or murder? Especially not murder. Did you meet with Mr. Span? Yes. Where did you meet with him? I think at my apartment on Laramie. Laramie and Maple? Yes. Now, out of the two houses, was Laramie and Maple where you spent more time or did you spend more time at Spalding? Laramie and Maple. And who do you recall was present for this meeting? Fufa, Pierre, and Labar. And did you meet inside the apartment on Laramie? No, outside in my backyard. Could you describe your backyard to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? My garage was tore down, so I had the white rocks in the back, so you could park four cars in the backyard. The whole backyard was filled with the rocks. Did you have a fence in the back, too? Well, on the sides, but not across the back. So you could pull in in the back? Yes. And you said you met in the back on the gravel? Yes. And so what did you discuss with yourself, Mr. Span, Pierre, and Fufop? Judge, I want to object on just foundation, Judge. Some time frame? All right should be discussed at least. Why don't you ask the witness about when this occurred? So, Mr. Nunnery, we're talking about the murder of Rudy Rangel, correct? Yeah. You testified earlier that Mr. Rangel was killed in June of 2003? Yes. Did this occur before Mr. Rangel was killed? Yes. Do you remember the exact date? I don't remember the exact date, but I would say maybe a month or a couple of weeks. Before the murder of Mr. Rangel? Yeah. Mr. Nunnery, if you would, tell us what you, Mr. Span, Pierre, and Fufop discussed. Well, I told him what Fred had just told me about it being a hit out on Cato, and I told him that I would give him $20,000 to carry out the hit. You told who you would give $20,000? Labar. And what did he say in response? He said, okay. He agreed to do it? Yes. Now, Mr. Nunnery, you're an unknown vice lord, correct? Yes. Do you, did you associate Mr. Span with a gang? Yes. Which gang? Four Corner Hustlers. So a different gang than you? Yes. So as an unknown vice lord, 
Why were you going outside your gang for such a serious crime? So that it wouldn't tie back to me? Mr. Nunnery, I want to shift gears for a moment. Talk about another person who I think you know goes by the nickname Black. Yes. Do you know that person? Yes. Do you know that person's real name? John Coleman. Do you know if that person goes by any other names? Marcus Ware. If I could have the government computer, please. Mr. Nunnery, I've put up on the screen what's marked as Government's Exhibit 102. Do you recognize that person? Yes. Who's that? That's Black. Mr. Coleman? Yes. So how did you know Mr. Coleman? I met him probably around 92 or 93. He was messing with my sister. He dated your sister? Yeah. Would you describe Mr. Coleman as a friend of yours? Yeah. Did you have an understanding if Mr. Coleman was in a gang? Yes. Which gang? Conservative Vice Lords. Now, at a certain point, did you bring Mr. Coleman into this plot to kill Cato that we've been discussing? Yes. Why did you bring Mr. Coleman into this plot? Because Mr. Coleman hung out at the car wash that Cato always went to. So prior to Mr. Bell talking to you, you knew who Cato was? Yes. And did you know Cato hung out at the car wash? Yes. And you knew Mr. Coleman spent time at the car wash? Yes. So did you meet with Mr. Coleman about this? Yes. Where did you meet with him? On Roosevelt in California. And you said the car wash is at Sacramento in California? Or Sacramento and Roosevelt? Yes. Is where you met Mr. Coleman near the car wash? Yes, down the street. And who was present for this meeting? Mr. Coleman was with a guy named Cat. Who is Cat? D. Ray Calcote. And I apologize if I could have the government computer one more time. Showing you what's marked as Government Exhibit 144. Mr. Nunnery, do you recognize that person? Yes. Who is that? D. Ray Calcote. Did you know Mr. Calcote? Yes. Did you associate with Mr. Calcote with a gang? Yes. Which one? Conservative Vice Lords. Was that the same gang as Mr. Coleman? Yes. And did you have a conversation with Mr. Coleman? Yes. And what did you talk to Mr. Coleman about? I told Mr. Coleman that I had a rapper that I wanted to introduce to Cato because Cato had a, he owned a record label and I told him to call me when he see Cato and so I could, you know, make them meet. Did you offer Mr. Coleman any money? Yes. How much? I told him I'd give him 1500 or $2,000. And at this point, you did not tell Mr. Coleman that you were looking to find Cato to kill him? No. Why not? because I didn't want him to say nothing. Did you eventually provide additional information to Mr. Coleman? Yes. What additional information did you provide to Mr. Coleman? I told him that we were trying to rob him. Meaning rob Cato? Yeah, rob Cato. Did Mr. Coleman agree to call you if he saw Cato? Yes. Now, Mr. Nunnery, I want to ask you some questions about looking for Cato. Once you had talked to Mr. Bell and once Mr. Spann had agreed to participate, did you go looking for Cato? Yes. Did you ever go looking for Cato with Mr. Spann? Yes. 
Do you know how many times you went looking for Cato with Mr. Span? Maybe two or three, four. And was there one time when you went to a studio? Yes. Who was present when you went looking for Cato at the studio? The first time I think it was me, Pierre, Labar, and Fufop. So you, Mr. Span, Pierre, and Fufop? Yeah. And again, this is before Cato was killed? Yes. After the conversation with Fred Bell and the conversation with Mr. Span about the plot? Yes. And I mentioned a studio, a recording studio. Did you associate Cato with a recording studio? Yes. Why did you associate him with a recording studio? Because he owned a record label and he had artists on his label. I think you said earlier he was a rapper? Yeah, he he had he had rappers on his label, yeah. So did you look for Cato at a recording studio? Yes. And did you, Mr. Span, Pierre, and Fufop go together? Yes, but in separate cars. Okay, so you hesitated. You weren't all in the same car? No. Okay, what car were you in? I was in a car by myself. And the other three were in a car together? Yes. Do you recall what kind of car you were in? Maybe a maroon intrigue. Do you recall what kind of car Mr. Span, Fufop, and Pierre were in? They were in a blue truck, but I believe it was a trailblazer or some kind of Chevy truck, but I'm not sure. And you went looking for Cato at this studio? Yes. Now, did you have an understanding of whether or not this was Cato's personal studio or a recording studio? I believe there was a recording studio that they was known to frequent. What did the building look like? It was a nondescript, I believe one story, looked like an office building, maybe. Did you drive to the studio separately? Yes. And what did you do when you got to the studio? We drove around the studio, around the back of the studio, to see if one of the cars was there. What do you mean to see if one of the cars were there? One of Cato's cars. Were you familiar with the types of cars Cato drove? Yes. What kind of cars did Cato drive? He had a gray Ram truck and he had a blue Tahoe. You said a Tahoe? Yeah. Did you see any of those cars there that evening? Yeah, I think we saw the Tahoe there that night. And so what did you do? We waited outside the studio. How long did you wait? few hours. And when you were waiting, did you remain in separate cars? Yeah. Do you know if anyone had a firearm that night? Yes. Who had a firearm? Pierre, Fufop, and Labar, I believe. And what was your understanding of what was going to happen if you saw Cato? That either Pierre or Fufop was going to kill him. Did you have a firearm that night? Yes. Now you said you went looking for Cato on other occasions? Yes. How many other occasions did you go looking for Cato? Maybe three or four or... Yeah, maybe three or four. And how many times with Mr. Span? I think maybe one or two other times. And did you always go to the studio or did you look for Cato in other places? Yeah, we either the studio or the car wash. And that's the car wash on Sacramento and Roosevelt? Yes. Do you know if Mr. Span ever went looking for Cato without you? 
Yes. How do you know Mr. Span went looking for Cato without you? Because he, he would call me and tell me. And what would he tell you? That he'd been riding around trying to find him and haven't had any luck? Any luck with what? Seeing him at the studio or the car wash. How long did this go on? A few weeks. A few weeks to a month, maybe. Did Mr. Spann ever express concern about other people getting the money for the contract? Yes, he didn't want anybody else to know about. Why? Because he wanted the money. Based on your understanding, did Mr. Spann think you may have hired someone else? Yeah, he he probably thought it was a possibility. Did you hire anyone else? No. Mr. Nunnery, I want to shift gears for a moment and ask you about another person you may know. Goes by the nickname Squeaky. Do you know who I'm referring to? Yes. And, Your Honor, if I may have the ELMO for a moment? Do you see Government's Exhibit 129 on the ELMO? Yes. And who is that? Squeaky. Who is Squeaky? One of Labar friends, Donnell Simmons. His name is Donnell Simmons? Yes. And you said he's one of the Mr. Spann's friends? Yes. Do you know if Squeaky Do you know if Squeaky is associated with a gang? Yes. Which gang? Four Corner Hustlers. At a certain point, did Squeaky become involved in this plot to kill Cato? Yes. Did you get him involved in the plot? No. Who did? Labar. How did that happen? He told me that he had somebody else that might be able to take care of it and asked me to meet him behind Squeaky's house. So did you meet Mr. Span behind Squeaky's house? Yes. And I know it's hard to remember these dates, but approximately when was that? A couple of weeks, probably, before Cato was killed. Was it after you went looking for Cato with Fufa, Pierre, and Mr. Span at the recording studio? Yes. And you said you went to Squeaky's house? Yes. Where was Squeaky's house? On Monroe and Keeler. And who was present for this meeting at Squeaky's house? Me, Squeaky, Labar. And do you... I'm sorry, you were still answering. I think Pierre may... might have been with Labar, but I'm not sure. And do you recall if you met inside Squeaky's house or outside? Outside. We actually met on Madison behind Squeaky's house because it's a vacant lot behind his house. So he just, he could walk out the back and just walk through the vacant lot. And we parked on Madison the next block. So you met on Madison, but you said Squeaky lived near Monroe and Keeler? Yes, which is the next block over. Madison and Monroe are just one separated? Yeah. What did Mr. Span say to you about Squeaky? He told me that he was one of his guys and he could get the job done. What did you understand him to mean when he said he could get the job done? That he could kill Cato. Did you discuss you, Mr. Span, and Squeaky where you should be looking for Cato? Yes. What did you discuss? That we would be looking for him at the car wash or the recording studio. Now, did you show Squeaky where Cato hung out? Not at that moment, but we later met up on another day, or it might have been that day. Okay. 
So after that meeting, you met up? Yes. Who met up? Me, Squeaky, and I think I was with Black that time. So not Mr. Span? Nah, nah. So it's you, Mr. Coleman, and Squeaky? Yes. And you were all together in one car? Yes. What kind of car were you in? We were in a rental car. I can't recall. I, I believe it was a Grand Prix or it was some kind of Pontiac. And where did you go? We rode up to the recording studio. Then we went to the car wash and we saw Cato's truck at the car wash. You saw Cato's truck at the car wash? Yes. What was the point of going to the recording studio and going to the car wash on this day? To see if we saw Cato. And you said you did see one of his cars? Yes. And what did you do when you saw one of his cars? We parked across the street and waited to see if he was coming back to get it. What was across the street? A vacant lot. How long did you wait? Couple hours. Did you see Cato? No. Did you or anyone else in the car have a gun? Yes. Who had a gun? Squeaky had a gun and I had a gun. So did you eventually leave? Yes.